Do you think that people sit on the toilet once a month and lay an egg like a chicken would? Hey y'all, welcome back. Mama Dr. Jones, OBGYN, and Mom24. Today we're going through a Reddit thread called r slash bad women's anatomy. This is a Reddit thread where people go and post stories or screenshots of people misunderstanding anatomy or reproductive tract in general or periods or pregnancy or whatever. Great opportunities for some laughing and some learning. Let's get into it. My good friend's baby's father told her not to go all the way in the water when I took her to the beach because the baby might drown. I heard it with my own two ears. <laughs> the top comment is, wait till he hears about amniotic fluid. <laughs> Obviously babies can't drown in utero. The way that they get oxygen is through the placenta and the blood flow through the umbilical cord. <sighs> Takes a breath, your blood oxygenates, and then that oxygen is taken to the placenta and transferred to the the baby through the placenta and the baby's deoxygenated blood picks that oxygen up and takes it to baby in utero. You breathe for your baby while they're inside. Pretty cool, huh? Just learned that girls can pee with a tampon in. Effing innovative. <laughs> I've encountered many people, even who own these parts, who don't understand the layout of their own vulva is in relation to where is the urethra, where's the vaginal opening, all of that. The reason this is so misunderstood, in my opinion, other than the fact that schools do a horrible t job teaching anatomy in general, is that the vulva has the labia minora and majora, which cover the opening for the urethra where you pee from and the opening for the vaginal vault. Because they're covered like that, sometimes people think they're like in the same place or that you like have your urethra inside the vagina, which is totally not accurate. Layout of the vulva is urethra on top, vaginal opening, and anus, where you poop from. I told my boyfriend and he was like, well, has your egg come out? How big do you think an egg is? I don't know, like a gra <laughs> grape or something? That would be um, a thing. It would be an interesting thing. A friend shared that he thought women were like chickens. One day a month, they would sit on a toilet all day and lay an egg. <laughs> what? Speaking of chickens though, we got some fertilized eggs to put in an incubator and one of our eggs hatched. So if you follow me on social media, you may have already seen that, but if not, you should follow me. Twitter, Instagram, it's a fun time. This is Uno. We just got some chicken eggs that were fertilized and we put them in our incubator and we waited and waited and hoped that one of them would hatch. There's really low hatch rates this time of year because it's the middle of summer and it's super hot. And this little guy made it. He hatched. He is about a week old now. That's Uno. Say hi to YouTube. What do you think, bud? Do you think that people sit on the toilet once a month and lay an egg like a chicken would? You're correct, good job. You're loud, sir. What actually happens is that once a month you ovulate and an egg is released from the ovary. And when that happens, generally, if you end up getting a fertilized embryo, it will implant into the uterus. And if not, then the egg is either reabsorbed by the body because it's microscopically small, or it just goes away through the reproductive tract. Sometimes people do feel ovulation, a little bit of cramping pain, a little bit of bloating, maybe even a little bit of spotting, and this is called middle schmerz. So that's the name of the occurrence of feeling ovulation when it happens. Everybody doesn't have that, but some people do. All right, I'm gonna put Uno back in his little box. He has five friends. We bought him five um, friends because they don't do well by themselves and only one of ours hatched, so. He has some friends in there. This is a school nurse, by the way, it's not just a random person talking to a sixth grader about her period. Just had a conversation with a sixth grade girl who started her period for the first time and she had lots of questions. Student, why do girls even have to get a period? My mom said it's because Eve ate the apple. I know this is just supposed to be a funny story, but I can't help myself. You are here, you know this channel. We have to talk to our kids about normal bodily functions because how will they know if something's wrong if you don't explain to them what is right? We have a cycle 
that preps the inside of the uterus to house an embryo. That has to happen in a cyclic fashion or the lining of the uterus gets overgrown. You could explain that in much simpler terms to a sixth grader, but if your kids come to you, and actually someone just uh, messaged me on Instagram and asked me this question too, similar to this. If your kids come to you and ask them questions, just give them an answer. Like, you don't have to be detailed. I think the person who messaged me said like, hey, my seven-year-old's really curious about how you know, babies get in the womb and I don't know how to answer. If they're that age to be asking, then they're old enough to know. And you don't have to get graphically detailed. Just start with something simple. The egg is there and it meets a sperm. And when that happens, it turns into an embryo, which grows into a baby in the uterus. A lot of kids will just be satisfied with that. And then if they say, well, how's it get in there? You can go on to further explain. But when they start asking questions, that's an indicator that they're old enough to have those questions answered. And the last thing you want is them going to school and asking the person who thinks that an ovulation is an egg that's the size of an actual egg, trying to explain to your kid how a baby got in there. Like, just do it yourself so that you know it's accurate. I know that's hard. I, I understand. It's hard for me too. And I do this and talk about these things all the time. So when my kids have questions, I have to like fight the urge to go like, oh, we'll talk about it later. Or, you know, the stork brings them, but just fight the urge. Don't show your own discomfort because that's going to make them uncomfortable and just make it okay for them to ask questions. That's the best thing you can do. Lesbians don't age well due to their body fluid swapping, messing with their their metabolism. It's called BRSS, Bendel Raymond Stein syndrome. Google it. Y'all know we got to Google this uh, because absolutely not. That is an impressive name. Bendel Raymond. This has to be totally made up. Like, please tell me this isn't something that someone has ever theorized. Every single thing I can find about this is literally it being used as an anti-gay propaganda. Propaganda? Propaganda. My brain is not firing on all cylinders right now. I don't even know. I can't tell just in that quick Google even where it originated, but yeah, that's not real. Still thinking about how my sixth grade science teacher told the girls they weren't allowed to handle the yeast during a simple class experiment. And when we asked, he said, ask your moms. Why is that person teaching science? You don't get yeast infections from handling yeast. In fact, you actually can get yeast infections other places besides the vagina. You can get yeast infections on your skin. You can get yeast infections in your blood, anywhere pretty much. You don't have to have a vagina to get a yeast infection. And they are caused by a variety of different things, but sometimes they also just happen. It's just kind of like a cold. You can just get a yeast infection and we just need to treat it and move on. They occur sometimes on the skin, especially in places with like overlapping folds. So underneath the breasts where it's warm, you might be a little bit sweaty. That's a great environment for yeast to grow. It can be very itchy and red and they still aren't caused by touching like activated yeast that you would use for baking. You are at an increased risk of getting yeast infections if you like have diabetes that's not well controlled. Sometimes people who are on birth control pills will get yeast infections at a little bit higher frequency um, as far as vaginal yeast infections go. But yeah, again, it can just can just happen and it certainly doesn't happen from handling yeast and i'm just still trying to get past the fact that this person is supposed to be teaching sixth grade science <sighs> just so crazy i get really worked up over this i just need to move on to the next one please keep your religion out of my uterus one should also keep a penis out of their uterus if they're not prepared for raising children uh <laughs> A penis doesn't go in the uterus. The penis goes in the vagina and the uterus is separated from the vagina by the cervix. Definitely no penises going inside uteruses. That would be horribly painful and terrible. And I promise you don't want that to happen. Wow. This is a tweet from Pink News, which is an LGBTQ plus news site who actually wrote about me and the transgender video that I made, which was super cool. They tweeted out this article that says, gay people exist because pregnant women have anal sex, claims Bishop. Interesting take. Bishop, sir, that is not how gay people are made. For example, if a woman dyes her hair brown while menstruating, then her blood will also be brown permanently. 
Some bleach their hair, which will kill them because they are putting bleach in their bloodstream. It's fine to bleach your hair while you're not on your period though, because your body is back to normal. Where do people come up with this stuff? Like, I, I, I don't even feel like I should talk about that. What? No, Reddit, don't do this to me. You're making my blood pressure high. There are certain foods that can specifically decrease bus size. Things like flaxseed, egg whites, salmon, tuna. It's high in omega-3, which regulates estrogen, which leads to a decrease in bus size. Mm, I don't think so. Estrogen does affect breast size, but this is largely like in adolescence and eating those things wouldn't change your estrogen levels enough to affect your breast size even at the peak time of breast development during puberty. Myth busted. I'm so happy you got to meet Uno. I hope you love him as much as we do. And maybe someday I'll introduce you to the rest of our baby chicks who don't have names yet. I hope you're having a great day. Have a wonderful week. Be kind to yourselves, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind. And I will see you next time. <laughs>